Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, I am going to be talking about custom Magic the Gathering cards and how I create them, more specifically, what software I use and why I really like the software. Um, custom Magic cards are really great. Every Sunday, I, uh, first off, I love Magic custom Magic cards so much that every Sunday on my channel, I do something related to them. Whether it's reviewing custom cards other people have made, reviewing cards I've made, Made, doing fun little games with like random words and random cards and all sorts of craziness. I have a whole playlist on my channel dedicated to custom magic cards, so you guys should go check those out if you are interested in that kind of stuff, which I assume you are if you clicked on this video. But I've gotten the question a couple times in the comments of what do I use to create these cards, and I thought I would spend today's custom magic video just kind of talking about that. In general, there are three different softwares that are used to create custom magic cards, and I'll talk about the one I used last. First, we have MTG Cardsmith. This one I would say is the worst out of all of the card, you know, softwares that I've come across. I mean, it doesn't format it very well, it doesn't use the correct fonts a lot of the time, it's slow to update, there's no way to do big sets, it just overall has a lot of problems, and unless you're designing maybe a one-off card that's meant to be a joke, I would recommend staying away from it. Moving into the better territory, we have mtg.design, which I think honestly can make some incredible sets and the cards really well. And so, you know, if you just want the basic experience of doing it through a web browser, go ahead. But my personal favorite is Magic Set Editor. This is a software that goes onto your computer and allows you to design custom cards. And you're actually looking at it right now. What I really love about it is how many customizable options you have. Not even just the base experience. If we were to just download Magic Set Editor and do nothing else but design cards, you have so many different options, and Magic Set Editor helps you in so many different ways. For instance, let's take a look at these top bars. We have cards. First off, unlike MTG Cardsmith, you can have as many cards as you want. I actually have a project right now with over a thousand cards in the file. That's Magic the Marveling, by the way, which is nearing its end, so you guys should check that out. But it allows you to have as many cards as you want. You can customize rarity. You can add watermarks. You can do all sorts of crazy things. But you'd probably be expecting the fact that you could add an enchantment watermark to one of these cards. You know, that's kind of just what you're going to want to do with custom cards. But there are so many things that are so nice and convenient about the software. For instance, set information. Um, obviously, this is kind of expect you know, expected that you're going to be able to edit set information, but it, it allows you to do some really nice things. For instance, if you're designing a set and the whole thing is that you're the artist of every card, you can just enter your name here. You know, copyright codes, maybe you add your like Reddit username here to show that, hey, I was the one to design these cards. Set codes, you can do all this. You can change the border. You can change what type of reminder text is giving given. You can adjust whether it automatically numbers the cards. You can add random, you can make it so the numbering starts at five instead of one. You can do all sorts of really awesome things. You can adjust how mana is sorted. It lets you do really anything you want. Moving on, we also have things like keywords. This is every keyword in Magic's history, right? And it'll keep track of how many times you use it. So you can be like, oh, I have 17 creatures with flying and only two with first strike. Maybe I should up the amount of flyer, or uh, sorry, up the amount of first strike or decrease the amount of flyers. And what's also awesome is you can create your own keywords. So let's say I wanted to do um, Tiny, which is a mechanic from my Magic the Gathering set. And you can even tell it to look for it and automatically add reminder text by telling you it what it's going to generally look for. For instance, Tiny itself is really only ever going to be the word. It won't be like Tiny 1 or anything. So I would just put Tiny. But let's say I could put Tiny 2 and that did something. You can insert a parameter. For instance, you can ha say it's going to look for Tiny and then a mana cost, for instance. And then it'll, and you can have a reminder text. Have reminder text. And so, for instance, if I were to go onto one of these cards and type Tiny, it's not going to do anything. But when I press space, it'll say, hey, put a mana amount, and then puts the reminder text. So I'm able to just put tiny reminder text here. And that is, then it's going to keep track of, you know, this thing. You can put additional rulings. You can use parameters. For instance, you can, like, in your, like, thing, now your reminder text is going to have this here. And overall, really, really awesome for, like, adding custom keywords. You can have all sorts of, like, different categories of these so that remember in set info we could adjust what gave reminder text so you could call it say a core mechanic and have it only give reminder text if you tell it to do so and that's really awesome
My favorite panel here is the statistics panel, and it has so many awesome things. You can first sort by like anything. So, oh, I want to see the, you know, something around my set. And actually, you know what? I am going to quickly, I'm going to quickly open Magic the Marveling, which is my big project. And you're able to see the statistics page, because it's a little hard with an empty set, is really interesting. So looking at Magic the Marveling, the most popular color of card I make is blue, followed by white and red. And you'll notice that black actually has the least amount of cards outside of like colorless. And what that does is it'll actually let you know how many cards. So 137 cards in my set are just mono blue. But what's also cool is you can maybe add something to that. So, for instance, I could add style, and now it's going to tell you, and I haven't even gotten to styles, and we will here, you know, what type of card. So, for instance, I have um, 30 different types of tokens. I have three cards that are split cards. We have uh, 32 cards that are double-faced, five cards that are vehicles, 20 cards that are styles. Are, sorry, that are sagas, not styles, um, you know, 15 or 943 cards that are just basic. And what you can also do is split that up. So now I want to sort it by what card type and then what color. So you'll notice that a majority of my double face cards are actually multicolored. Uh, but a majority, actually, a lot of most of my cards are multicolored, but it lets you break it up and you can even break it up into three different things. I can also add the power thing. And now it's going to show you this this weird, you know, showing you the different types of cards mixed with what colors, mixed with, you know, what uh, all sorts of craziness you can do. Um, you can get lots of information, and I really love it. For instance, um, and this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler for um, Magic, oh wow, that's uh, not useful, uh, for Magic the Marveling, but we're going to be able to like do it by Illustrator. And for me, what that allows me to do is see how many cards of e you know I have in each set um, and so I'll be able to come back here and just look at all sorts of fun data on top of that I can generate randomized packs which I'm not gonna do because I don't want to reveal any uh, cards ahead of time but you can do that you can also check for instance the console and see you know if there's any errors happening and what my favorite section is is the styles so here we have a ton of different styles and that's what I think magic uh, set editor has over every other set editor is the fact that it has unlimited amounts of styles why? Because you can create your own styles. You can download styles from the internet. You can, you know, this one style alone has all of these different options. I can make this guy a mutate creature, which is going to shift his frame a little bit. We have full arts. Um, we have borderless, and then you'd have to redo the art for some of these. But, um, oh, you know, I can change it so his crown is actually the companion crown. Um, and so the, you have all these different options. I can make it so it's textless. I just have all of these options, and that's what I really love about it. It just gives you so many options. If I wanted to go out there and find myself, you know, another Pokemon one, I could go do that. If I want to find one that is a, you know, a scroll because I want to make a, I don't know, Town of Salem based, you know, card set, I can go out and do that. I could even make it myself, and that's what I really love. Honestly, if the name of this set, if, if I could give this anything give this anything. If I could give this tool a name, it would be, or a defining characteristic, I should say, um, it would be customization, because you do get all those choices. Either way, guys, uh, before I sign off this video, I have a couple things to say. First, if you have any problems with this software, I can help you guys out. Leave a comment down below. On top of that, um, let me know what you guys think about Magic Set Editor and custom Magic cards as a whole. I will see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. I thought I'd do this fun little video. Um, if you guys didn't like it, it's fine. I thought I would experiment a little bit. Either way, see you in the next one.